Good morning, children. I am Sunita, teaching you uh, political science. Today we shall deal with the first chapter from politics, democracy in the contemporary world. You all know uh, modern age is an age of democracy and you are familiar with the term uh, democracy because you have learned it in your smaller classes itself. And before going on to the topic, we shall have a brief introduction to the evolution of democracy. The glorious revolution in England and the French revolution in France led to the development of democracy. The glorious revolution led the first foundation of the democratic principles of rule of law. Earlier, they believed that the king's wishes were the law. The people protested against this principle and by dethroning their king in 1688 by passing the Bill of Rights, they established the idea that the country should be ruled by laws passed by the people or by the parliament. The French Revolution emphasized that the country should be ruled by laws passed by the people. Rule of law was the first step towards the establishment of a democratic government. These revolutions gave birth to another idea which strengthened the roots of democracy. It was the idea of accountability or responsibility, which means that the government must be responsible to the people who had the right to vote and who were known as electoral. Only a small number of money people could cast their vote. Therefore, democratic government was imperfect. The middle and the poor classes fought against this injustice. After this, they were given the right to vote. Adult franchise, it was not extended to women. After long struggle, women were given the right to vote. Later, in the 19th and 20th centuries, the idea of democracy was extended further, not only in political field, but to economic and social field. Thus, it developed slowly. The first step was rule of law. The second step was the principle of accountability. Third, adult franchise. And the fourth one, political equality extended to economic equality. Now we will move on to the different forms of power or non-democratic government. Democracy. What is democracy? Democracy means it's a form of government where rulers are being elected by the people. And democracy is a word which has been derived from two Greek words Demos, D-E-M-O-S, Demos and Kratia. It's uh, derived from two Greek words, Demos and Kratia, which means power of people. And democracy was the term which uh, was being laid or its foundation was being laid in Athens. Now, prior to our definition, moving on to the definition of democracy, what is democracy? Democracy, told, as told, it's a form of government of the people, by the people and for the people. Democracy, it's a form of government of the people, by the people and for the people. So, as told in the introduction above, there was different forms of government prior to the emergence of democracy, which you call as non-democratic forms of government. There were different forms of non-democratic government prior to a uh, democratic government. There were a number of other systems of ruling which was called as non-democratic forms of government. So there were different forms of non-democratic government, uh, namely monarchy, dictatorial form of government or authoritarian form of government which you also call as military, military dictatorship. There was also another form of government which was called as theocracy. So what do you mean by monarchy? Who is a monarch? Monarch is a ruler and thereby monarchy means all of you know there was a time period when uh, many of the states were being ruled by rulers. So this form of government came to be called as 
monarchy and here monarch was the absolute power all the decisions were being taken by the rulers without any consultation uh, of the people so this monarchy later came to an end and uh, there were two types of monarchy which was called as constitutional monarchy monarchy of two types called as absolute monarchy and constitutional monarchy c o n s t i t u t i o n a l constitutional monarchy there were two types of monarchy which came to be called as absolute monarchy and constitutional monarchy absolute monarchy is a system of uh, government where all the absolute power rests in the hands of a ruler that means all decisions were taken by the ruler himself later absolute monarchy came to an end and constitutional monarchy emerged constitutional monarchy means the power of a ruler were being defined by the constitution there was the emergence of a set of rules and regulations rules and regulations according to which a ruler has to rule so that was called constitutional monarchy now the next one is dictatorial form of government dictatorial d i c t a t o r i a l dictatorial form of government which you call as military dictatorship or authoritarian form of government here also uh, the ordinary citizens did not have any say in the decision making process all the decisions were were being taken by the dictator himself or the military or the authority themselves then came theocracy the third one you call it as theocracy t h e o c r a c y it is called as theocracy now there are certain regions where there was uh, there, there were importance were given to certain religious systems or religious leaders were given priority they hold power there and most of the decisions were taken by the majority of people who uh, were concerned with the religion itself that means majority religion so uh, such form of government came to be called as theocracy so all this come under non democratic form of government so when democracy emerged non democratic form of government lost its importance and power now moving on to democracy or democratic form of government now types of democratic form of government so there are two types of democracy they are direct democracy and indirect democracy direct democracy means there is no difference between the rulers and the ruled now people uh, here directly participate in the government of the country and they can discuss the problems and they have the power to control the state machinery that is called as direct democracy from the word itself it's familiar to you the people directly participate in the process of governing Now next is indirect democracy which you also call as representative democracy here also it's familiar here from the term or the meaning is being known from the term itself representative democracy it means that the administration of the government is run by people's representatives in direct democracy people directly participated but here in indirect democracy or representative democracy the representatives were being uh, helping in the administration process now each and every representative is elected by the people the representatives are elected by the people and thereby these representatives are accountable to the people also and they are being elected through the process of a system called UAF which is called as universal adult franchise and here they are being elected mainly for a specific period of time for a fixed period of time which you call as 
years and after the tenure or after the time period new election is being conducted thank you